Light. It's so vital to our daily lives, yet most people don't think twice about it. Or, or did I say it a different way? Something, just something about all of this is terribly, terribly familiar. Light. It's so vital to our daily lives, yet most people don't think twice about it. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Life in the Smarter Home. Hope you enjoyed our intro, our little recreation. I thought it would be fun to kind of go back, um, blast from the past from our marketing video that came out about a year ago. And I wanted to compare and contrast it in terms of how it compares to what we're going to talk about on today's episode, which is about automatic or auto magic home automation compared to a year ago when that was a combination of some home automation and sequencing lights to come on from the back to the front and timed with, you know, walking pacing and the actual speech I had to uh, give to the audience um, and all that video production stuff. But contrasting it with what you saw at the beginning of today's episode, the very beginning of that intro, that required really no programming at all. It was home automation. It was auto magic. Is that even a thing? It was because I walked around and had an app running on my phone that was sitting in my back pocket. Pretty cool. So we're going to talk about the one question that I get a lot of, which is how do I get started with home automation? Many of you email me and thank you so much. I try to get back to you right away. And if not, um, wait a couple days and eventually your answer will probably show up on one of the Q and a episodes. But how do you get started? Some people want to just start with the basics. Maybe they want to buy the clapper from the seventies or they want to do the ultimate. I get a lot of very long emails and you ask me questions about, you know, I'm doing a home renovation project. What do I go with the technology? And most consumers just want something that's going to work. Maybe a couple devices to control. They don't want to start, you know, going over to their switches and pulling things out and doing electrical work. They're afraid of that stuff. Um, they don't want to hire someone. They just want to buy something and have it work. And hopefully that it might work with a few other things in the future that they could also hook it up to. And there are some solutions like that. And some people are really into apps. They want to control it through an app. They don't want anything else. Maybe they don't care about voice control. They don't want to, again, rip out um, outlets and switches and replace them with special keypads in their walls. They just want something simple. So we started down this road of talking about this product uh, actually last December. So I won't go into all the specifics because you can watch the episode. And in fact, there's the product right there. I don't have it in my hand because they're all in use. It's the Zuli Smart Plug. The Zuli Smart Plug does a few things and it does it well. They, it does them well. Dimming and brightening your dimmable lights, turning on and off, you know, non-dimmable lights and appliances, you know, up to 1800 watts. So you could plug in like, at, you know, well, not anything, but quite a bit, almost 1800 watts of power. So that's pretty powerful. It also measures in real time your energy usage so you can figure out what things might need to be upgraded to save you some power. And all of that, of course, being run on an app um, that you can do additional things. You can schedule um, the devices so that they will come on and come off at certain times. But then there's the auto magic part. There's other features. And again, watch the video, uh, which we went into all the, the apps set up and whatnot. The auto magic part is called presence and it requires a three or more of these Zuli smart plugs. So they make a long story short, Zuli took Bluetooth. They created their smart plug and they wanted to have this presence feature that would establish this kind of invisible network, this mesh networking, um, around your home. You can't see it. You can't feel it, but it can triangulate your position, your phone's position, hopefully that you have in your back pocket so that as you walk around your home from room to room, as you've set this up and we'll go into that in a minute, it will detect your presence and you can set lights and appliances to come on automatically, which is totally cool. Once you reach a certain position and then because the app is multi-user, you could have multiple family members all with the same app, all hoping that they keep it in their pocket because they don't have uh, the app for uh, wearables yet. 
Assuming that you have the whole thing set up, literally once everyone leaves a certain room, you could set up the lights to all turn off automatically. I'm gonna show you more of the app later. I just wanted to show you real quick how you do the configuration, the setup of presence. You do it per device. You set, you place them in where you want them. You plug your devices into that. You set those things up and then you do this little calibration procedure. So let's, let's just take a look at that real quick in um, much faster speed than real time. So the presence technology, the setup, the calibration, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And once you have it set up, it actually works for non-Zuli devices. We'll, we'll go into that in a minute when we bring up the app and we, I can show you a few things on the simultaneous display. One caveat though to all of this, I live in a very small home. This is 400 square feet. You normally don't get to see all these uh, longer angles. The bedroom is in the back, the bathroom, the closet, and the main living space. This is it. So having only three uh, smart plugs here, you know, it's not a perfect setup, but it works relatively well, and it would work even better in a larger space, probably with a couple more smart plugs, maybe four, five, six, and you have a little bit more separation and they can establish that network to really understand where you are, and especially if you're gonna have uh, have these smart plugs tracking a few different smartphones and people um, around your home. So your results will vary. Uh, my results have been pretty good, but a little bit difficult to maintain the separation of rooms. Sometimes they trigger uh, a little bit um, early, but uh, but that's okay uh, for this scenario. For your scenario, your, pro your results will probably be better. But let me show you the app because I thought this was cool um, in terms of obviously they're, the lights and devices are gonna respond as you walk from room to room, but the app, while you're using it, if you need to set things up, change settings, schedules, look at energy usage, it's gonna change as, as you walk through your place. So let's go all the way back, let's go all the way back to the bedroom, all the way, you know, 20 feet away, and I'm, I have my back facing the camera, which is no good, so I'm here, and you've seen that now it will switch over, and I'm in the bedroom, it's gonna show me the bedroom, Obviously, I can do things such as um, turning things on uh, and uh, or turning things off and then back on again. And then I can now go over here, come forward a little bit. And I just, I really like the design, uh, multiple colors. Um, now we've switched over to the bathroom, which is the color green. Not just that the light is green, but <laughs> that's, the, that's the Philips Hue. So the Philips Hue is being controlled through the app, through Zuli, it's also being controlled through Presence because you can enable that um, even though it's not a Zuli device. It's understanding that it's in the room that you placed it in in terms of this is where it's physically located and you want it to turn on automatically. I actually don't have anything plugged into the Zuli smart plug, but it's being there and it's able to establish that network and understand where I am. So I think this stuff is very cool. Energy usage even works on Philips Hue devices because it knows how much energy it's, it's approximately using. So that's fantastic. And obviously I've also got dimming control and obviously full off, uh, on off control there. So, uh, and again, you can see the glitch. It's thinking that I'm in the bedroom because again, these smart plugs are really close together. So we'll come back out here uh, into the living room and it'll switch over, you saw that. Um, here is the Nest integration. So I don't forget um, to talk about this. It's off right now. So we don't have a loud kind of noise coming from the, the blower fan but you can set up presence with Nest as well, and people have had challenges with Nest sensors. Mine is back here on this wall, so it can only see till about here. It probably thinks, even though I have this, its presence technology turned off, or its auto away turned off. If I'm sitting on the couch 
watching TV, it's a challenge because, you know, a couple hours go by and it thinks that I've left the house because there's no activity. Um, so I had turned that off anyways, but this presence technology can be applied within the app to a Nest thermostat and then you can actually have it set away temperatures, home temperatures, based on you actually being here or not. Not geolocation, not GPS, but actually the same presence technology that's detecting what room you're in. So I think that's great. Again, it's an integration. It means that anything that is network capable, that someone else has a way of allowing Zuli to integrate with their system and perhaps back and forth, that they're gonna be able to add more integrations, more devices that can be controlled in the app. Now, speaking of, of that, um, this is where we get into other systems, you know, such as HomeKit, being able to control multiple devices from multiple manufacturers. Uh, same thing with SmartThings and other home automation systems. But again, this is simple. Link it up, we're not gonna go through that entire setup process. Um, there are, it's a very, very simple setup process to link up Philips Hue and the same thing with Nest. But I love this, I can go and uh, let me go back into the kind of the main menu of rooms. I can go to all rooms and then we're gonna see that I've got a master dimmer control at the top here so I can bring everything down. You saw that kind of flash up because it was at a different, everything was not at the same level. But now I can literally bring everything down and I have exact dimming control across all devices, Philips Hue devices and Zuli smart plugs, two different manufacturers. Um, I think that's fantastic. With one swipe, I can turn everything off. Everything's off, I can turn everything back on. With one swipe, everything's back on. I think that's fantastic. It's great integration, it really works. Um, you're seeing it work live right here on this demo. Um, I think it's a, a good way if you just have simple, needs in terms of home automation and just some plugs and again in the future maybe Zuli is going to build some in-wall devices with this same technology um, and again integrations coming in the future. I think this could be a good start for some people. You can get a three pack of these on Amazon. Different Amazon sellers will have a link for you uh, in the episode notes. You can get them for roughly $100 to $110 for a three pack. You can also get them, it's a little more expensive um, to just go direct through Zuli. And uh, I guess you could start with one or two, but you won't have the presence technology built in because you need three or, or more to get started. And if you have a reasonable size home and you want to kind of really, kind of really actually automate a few devices, you may need to get more than three. All right, that's the end of the episode. If you like our content, please hit that subscribe button so you'll see more of our content in your feed and in your weekly uh, emails from YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button. All of this information tells um, YouTube, um, kind of flags us and says, hey, they're relevant. People like their stuff. Um, push them higher up in the uh, search results. So uh, if you also like us a lot, and if you actually want to contribute directly, and I mean financially, you can uh, go to our main YouTube page, I almost said Facebook, our main YouTube page is a little red, a uh, little blue button on the right side. You can contribute a buck or two or five bucks as a one-time thing and helps us out with uh, producing uh, better quality episodes, um, getting more products to review. Some of our products come from manufacturers. Thank you very much to Zuli for providing the, uh, the products, uh, the smart plugs for us to take a look at um, and other times we just have to buy them. Uh, we have a growing community over at Patreon. They actually support the show on a monthly basis and they get some perks depending on what level they contribute. So thank you guys. I'm Jody Ganzik for Smarter Home Life. See you next time.